want to bring the run-up conversation home. Uh, the Minister of Finance, uh, Budget and National Planning, Zainab Abamed, has said that the federal government will do away with the petroleum subsidy by June 2023. Uh, she said this on Tuesday in Abuja during a press conference to mark the end of the 28th National Economic Summit. Uh, reports also say that fuel subsidy gulped 2.56 trillion naira between January and August 2022. And also in the medium term expenditure framework, the federal government proposed uh, to, you know, send 3.3 trillion naira on fuel subsidy between January and June 2023. And of course, according to the minister, removal of the fuel subsidy is part of the federal government's medium term plan in the budget. Uh, it's going to be a very you know interactive conversation and to have that with us we have uh, dr chiwi koba he's an economist and an analyst and he's also the convener amaka chiwi koba foundation uh, you're welcome sir it's my pleasure to be on the program all right, so uh, the subsidy is going to be removed by June 2023, uh, this fuel subsidy. How do you think this will affect the Nigerian economy? Well, I think uh, it may not be appropriate to, de to say it in, in absolute, absolutism or definitely. It may be removed mm. um, because we definitely will have a new government in uh, by that time, and we do not know the the line they will take. But, but in answering your question, removing fuel subsidy is neither here nor there. Uh, the this is because as of today, we do not have a complete information on what uh, the quantity of fuel we are consuming as a nation and all that. So it's still numbers that that we need to look into deeper to understand the business. So. And then I think that's what the new government might need to do first, to understand what quantity of petroleum products do we import, do we consume, and all that. And that will help us to determine that. But beyond that, I've always canvassed for the removal of fuel subsidy. First, as a result of the corruption that is also involved in the, in the whole uh, process, and, uh, and the OPEC nature of the whole transaction that is also uh, related to fuel subsidy. It will affect the economy. There will be panic. And that will also lead to a uh, sudden rise in prices of goods and services. So already we are battling with inflation. As you know, yesterday the Nigerian Bureau of Statistics released the current inflation rate, which is now about 21.09%. If you recall in my last program, I did say that we'll continue experiencing high inflation until after the elections next year. And that is what will happen. So by the time you remove fuel subsidy, as a result of the panic, you will know bus drivers will raise their prices, people will raise their prices, and that will also affect the general economy of the country and well-being. But over time, it depends on how the government wants to do that. If the money that is going to be saved from the removal of the fuel subsidy will be deployed first in providing palliatives to the people in terms of providing that uh, public tra transportation and all the rest of it all. And also deploying it in, also in the social sectors. I know I listened to your conversation earlier on education. In our country, part of the problem we're experiencing is not just about tertiary education, but you find out that the basic education is at its lowest ebb. You know, we have a lot of out of children, out, 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 out of school children, and the kind of education we are getting now is not qualitative also. So until we did with those issues, so if government decides to deploy savings from those things in those kinds of centers to improve our education, improve our healthcare, improve our wash and rest of, of, of it all, I'm sure it will also help to cushion there would be a negative impact of fuel subsidy removal by next year, if that was actually. Okay, uh, you've, you've just talked about the consequences to Nigerians if this should be done. But speak to the, the timing of this removal. It's always somehow, <laughs> using the Nigerian parlance, an administration is leaving 
and there's massive employment. Just like now, I saw uh, a, a few minutes ago that the embargo on employment nation nationwide has been removed. So they want to do mass employment in the federal sector. Okay, good. And then subsidy is going to be removed uh, theoretically, or uh, yeah, by June, which is it's just me. Me, the, a new administration is coming in, and by June you're removing subsidy. So. How do you see the timing? Speak to it. What, is it good or is it bad? And if so, why? You know, when I, when I made my introductory remarks or answering to the first question, I spoke to that. I said, we are not sure if fuel subsidy, petroleum subsidy, will be removed in June mm. because we'll be having a new government. This government cannot speak to a new government that will be empowered then. And as, 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 as you may have observed, the announcement is more of a political announcement than, than an economic announcement. The reason being, the current administration has been in power for almost eight years. And before they came in, it was part of the things they said they would do. They said there is nothing like waste subsidy and all the rest of it. But we've had that, the first subsidy gradually increasing. As at for 2023, the budget for six months is about 3.6 trillion. As at August this year, we have spent over 500 billion on fuel subsidies. So, and you didn't do it while you were in office, and you are leaving, making an announcement that that will be removed. And I don't think that is, uh, that is uh, in terms of timing, that is not uh, realistic. You know, and I don't think that is what is going to happen. I think th th that announcement is just made to also being the good news that the government is doing something. But in actual implementation, I don't see that happening immediately. Okay. Uh, Bayo, I'm very sure you're, you're listening to the conversation. Um, maybe you have a, a question or two or a, an observation. No, I, I, I absolutely uh, quite understand and share the, uh, the sentiments uh, that Mr. Obai is ex uh, Dr. Obai is expressing. Um, I feel too that, you know, we need uh, our political elite to begin to consider taking hard decisions, okay? But those hard decisions have to be, uh, has to be accompanied by transparency, uh, has to have, you know, um, structures to guarantee accountability, and then whatever benefits immediately accrue from them should be channeled to the benefit of the population that has to bear, you know, some of the, the side effects uh, of those. We've been rigmaroling and going around in circles over this issue of subsidy removal. Uh, even at some point we were told it was removed and suddenly again we are still, uh, uh, you know, paying that. And I think that uh, if we do not have a local capacity to refine uh, our, our especially petroleum products, it's going to be extremely difficult uh, for any government not to have to at some point subsidize fuel consumption if what we buy on the global market is affected by a dramatic rise in prices, as we saw recently. We have been terribly affected simply because our own local refining capacity is almost zero. If we have the capacity to do these things ourselves, it will, it will cushion. We, we might have an increase, but it will not be as, as hard and as uh, harsh, you know, as it will, it will be when we have to, again, be importing fuel. Or, and I'm not just talking of, you know, petrol alone, but all the yeah. commodities and things that we need, you know. We must build our capacity uh, to, to refine them, to finish them up, and not just be exporting raw materials all the time. Let's just round off here, if you may, in 30 seconds, if you can. Um, I like this. This is the season, so we'll talk about it. Uh, 2023, we'll have election. Uh, what is your projection? What is your, your, your hope for 2023 election and all that? So uh, do you have faith in it? Uh, what are you expecting? Just briefly, please. Well, personally, I'm very optimistic that the election will be free and fair, as has been promised by the electoral body, the INEC, and the president. 
and uh, uh, the, 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 the citizens will elect a leader with the capacity, with the character, and the competence. No longer with the uh, bad mouths that and uh, promises that that are not deal with the how you know solving uh, problems as a nation. I would believe that if we have a president that is truly elected by the people, then we will be, we'll begin to deal with, with our long-term structural problems as it should be, you know, taking us to where we need to be. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Mr. Ba, for coming on the show this, uh, today. We do hope to interact you. with you more in the coming days. Thank you. All right, so we'll be taking a break. Uh, the news will come up at 12, and when we return, the run-up will continue. Do not go anywhere. Stay with us.